Hello and welcome to The Last Tackle. We're about to embark on one of the biggest and best weekends in rugby league. It's Easter weekend. It's a rivals round. I'm delighted to welcome to the studio Carl Aymar. He's going to be co-commentating on St Helens versus Wigan. And this man, Eddie Hemmings, he retired on Good Friday. Five years ago? Yes, April the 19th, 2019. That was the last time. Yeah. Lovely, warm, sunny day as well, wasn't it? It was glorious, a bit different to this year, isn't it? It was, it was lovely. Um, a fantastic memory for me personally that day, obviously, because it was the end of, of, uh, of my time at Sky. But looking back over the 30 years that I did, you didn't have to build Good Friday up because you got hulking... Was it Rogers. deliberate to go out on Good Friday? What? For you. Was it for, deliberate? Well, yes. Oh. Yeah, I think so. It was either the Good Friday, Wigan Saints derby or the grand final. And I wasn't going at the end of the season, so it was that day, uh, Good Friday. Um, um, it was a fan fantastic day. You never, as I say, you never had to build Good Friday up. Hull Kingston Rovers, lunchtime, Wigan Saints in the afternoon. And you just went home and sat back and thought, wow, what a day we have had. And it was, it was just fantastic from start to finish. And that April the 19th, you know, very, very fond memories. Um, the tear in the eye from the wife because we wouldn't be going to the posh supermarkets <laughs> no. anymore. But you know what I mean? Uh, it, <laughs> oh, it was no. just great. It was a great way to finish. Look, you did a brilliant job on Sky. And you're going to be co-commentator this Friday. Yeah. How excited are you about that? No, I, you know, I can't wait. Uh, as a player, it was always the, 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 the fixture that you looked out for. Uh, but now as a fan and luckily enough to work with in the media as well, it's just something else that I can't wait to, to be a part of. Eddie sat in that chair uh, for, for many, many years and uh, now I'm going to get to experience something along, along those lines. So I can't wait. It's all set up for a a fantastic game. Will uh, Wigan go on and, and win 16 games in a row, which will be a record? Uh, obviously overtaking St. Helens, who I believe in 2008, 15 games in a row they won. So it's all there. Uh, all the ingredients are there for a, for, a fantastic, for a fantastic game. I've got a question for you, Kyle. How are you going to get from Hull in the lunchtime to, uh, to St. Helens? Because you, you're on every I'll game, as far as I'm concerned. I'll Hull. borrow your helicopter, <laughs> yeah. Eddie. I'll, 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 um, yes, I've got a nice little deal for you. Right, we'll talk about uh, Easter weekend very, very shortly. Let's start by uh, looking back at the uh, Challenge Cup. And we know the draw for the quarterfinals now. On uh, Saturday the 13th, it's going to be Hull KR versus Lee. Repeat of last year's final. <coughs> That's live on the BBC. And Catlands versus Huddersfield. And then on a Sunday, it's Castleford versus Wigan. Then live on the BBC, Saints versus Warrington. Um, let's just talk about a couple of games. Let's talk about Friday night, first of all. Um, Leeds versus Euro Club Saints. Leeds... Disappointing again. Disappointing again. They, they played the, the week really before, well for 25 yeah, minutes. Really before. Exactly, Mark. The week before, I thought I, I was worried for Saints. I thought Leeds started with an intensity. I thought Saints just looked a little bit off, particularly in the middle of the field. And uh, I felt that if Leeds were going to win that, they had to score some points before half time. And, you know, there was an up, I think it was Andy Ackers who drops the ball about 30, 40 metres away from his own line, about 30 minutes into the game. And it kind of swung the momentum, and they were never really able to recover from there. But going back to Friday night, I just felt like it just Saints looked like they learned from that game the most out of the two sides, and they never really looked like losing Mark. Um, you, you know, I thought they were. I, thought I don't they were really pretty... know where Leeds are at. You no, know, one three, hmm. lost two out of the Challenge Cup. I don't know where they are. But even in those, we games... all expected them to yeah. improve. No, no, but, uh, particularly with that new spine that they've got. But I think with Leeds and how they've won the games this year. It's very difficult to get a gauge on them because in many ways they've had to come back from behind and almost, yeah. you know, we're, where we are in the season now, you could almost think that they've maybe got a little bit lucky in them games. There's arguments for, you know, Salford could have won that, that, that day in round one and the other narrow games that they've had. But, you know, they were able to get through it, get points on the board. But I absolutely agree. It's so difficult to get a full understanding of where that, where that club is in terms of playing at the Eddie, moment. Eddie, obviously a massive club, won the grand final on numerous occasions, but... Look, a way off challenging, don't they? They do at the moment, don't they? And Rowan Smith said afterwards that he was he thought it was disappointing. Well, tell that to your supporters, Rowan, because they mm. will be absolutely heartbroken. Mm. You know, Wembley is a, a massive prize for playing three games yep. and playing well. You get to one of the biggest showpieces of the season. Uh, but they've been knocked out at this stage of the competition for the last four years now. Right. So they obviously have a problem mm. with the Challenge Cup for some unknown reason, the Leeds Rhinos. And when I heard that Lewis Dodd was out, I thought, well, this is a big chance for them. But Moses and Bai played so well, didn't yeah, he? Turned, His kicking yeah. game was tremendous. And you have to ask, where now for the Rhinos? Well, mm. 
they can be heads down, eyes down, looking, let's get to Old Trafford. But that isn't certain with, a, as you say, the record they've got at the moment, three, three and two. It's going to be difficult from long season ahead, I yeah. think. On Friday night, Hull Cow beat Salford. Uh, Wigan, Sheffield Eagles. It was it was at level at half time. Do you know, I was watching the Leeds Saints game and then I looked at my phone at half time to check some of the other scores and I almost was like, <laughs> that can't be right, surely. Yeah, you know, that was but, the same. Yeah, no, but look, uh, obviously those two clubs have got history in the Challenge yeah. Cup and, uh, you know, I bet there was quite a few nervous uh, Wigan fans around uh, around nine o'clock on, on last Friday night. But obviously, look, Wigan, you know, you, you even at that scoreline, you felt that that team would pull away and, and they did. And, you know, for them, uh, they won't even remember that game if they go on and get the hands on the cup uh, later on in the year. So it's, a, it's a, just a case of getting through and getting in the next round, isn't it? And uh, Eddie, you were on last week. We talked about two teams it was going to be a big challenge cup for. And that was Hull away at Huddersfield. Obviously, massive disappointment for Hull. Uh, Castleford away at Batley. Castleford got through it. But what about Hull? Castleford did, Castleford did get through it. Batley gave them a little bit of a, a frightener as well, though, as well as the Sheffield yeah. Eagles did at Wigan. But Cass got you know, home. We're going to talk about the Hull derby, but another big defeat for Hull. Uh, it, well, it's, it's, it's huge. I mean, you know, we said last, last week on this programme that it was a massive game for both clubs. And for Huddersfield to win by 50 points to six is remarkable. It really is. Uh, that's the second week in a row that the Black and Whites had conceded the 50 points. Um, just one win all season for Hull, and that was against London, and they could oh, they easily just, have they lost do, that. Yeah, they got yeah, up in the last yeah. couple of minutes. Jake Connor and uh, Adam Swift came back to haunt their former club, didn't they? You know, Adam Swift, four tries. Yeah. I, I, I think Tony Smith has got to be under a bit of pressure, if I'm honest. He can point to his CV, which is fair enough. What he did at Huddersfield, he stabilised the club. What he did at Leeds, first trophy in 32 yeah. years. What he did at Warrington, took them to four Challenge Cup finals. They won three of them uh, and a bit of stability there. And at Hull Kingston Rovers, he sort of helped them to get to where they are today. Yeah. I'll never forget him after, I think it was, I think it was the Easter fixture couple of years ago when he was the Hull Kingston Rovers coach and he came in to the Rovers dressing room after they had beaten the Black and he's leading the cheers and he's pumping the fist and he's banging the drum and about three weeks later he's across the, <laughs> the other side of the city I thought this isn't going to work out well anyway it hasn't and it isn't this year now yeah. and Adam well, Pearson and the, the whole uh, apparently they're all heading for the exits the Two weeks ago. Well, we'll talk about the next That's fixture be in difficult. detail because That's it's going to be, be huge pressures on. Obviously, uh, Hull KR have had the upper hand over Hull of late right. as well. Uh, we showed live Lee versus Featherston. Showed that Featherston going to do all right in the Championship this year. That was a decent game, Lee versus Featherston. Yeah, it was always. <clears throat> sorry, Mark. It was always going to be that way. You know, Featherston are a side that fancy their chances at. Uh, uh, progressing into Super League so it was probably a real yardstick for that club and, and with that once you put emotion and effort into it uh, with a realistic ambition of them seeing probably Lee a bit vulnerable at the moment given the players that they have out that they probably felt they could have gone there and uh, and maybe nicked that one but you know respectable scoreline for Featherston uh, but obviously Lee just had a bit too much quality there Mark yeah, so let's just talk about the draw very quickly. Hull Cow versus Lee, Catlands, Huddersfield, uh, Castleford versus Wigan, Saints versus Warrington. Well, Saints will be pleased to be drawn at home, won't they? Yes, yes. I think if you're ever going to play in your big games, you always want to be at home, don't you? You just want that little bit more of an advantage. But uh, that will be an absolute great game. You know, it's probably the pick of the round, you know, out of all of those four games. Uh, a bit of history between those two sides, obviously, with the Challenge Cup finals, etc. Uh, and a Saints Warrington game. It's the next best thing, you know, for Saints fans as a Saints Wigan game. There's a fierce rivalry between the two clubs, and uh, Warrington are going about the business. Uh, I think pretty good so mm. far you know nobody's put them on that pedestal that they were last year when they shot out to that you know that eight eight victories in a row they're just going about the business quite quite nicely I think at the minute and they'll be happy with where they're at and then uh, got a repeat of last year's final Hook Lee yes that's hope it's as, as uh, exciting yeah. as the, the Wembley final a golden fantastic, point wasn't it? Uh, finish for that yeah I mean it, again, this is a big test for Lee now to see where they are because mm. they've suddenly just started to get a couple of results under their belt. Hulkingston Rovers, I think, are, are, are sensational this year. I really do. And uh, they obviously got through last week and there was a lot of emotion, apparently, at Craven Park after the passing of, of Phil yeah. Lowe. 
uh, and you know you've got all that behind you and they've got a great crowd at Hulkington Rovers as well they? they're right on top of the players they're vociferous they, they'll have a, a really good uh, dig but yeah a repeat of last year's final who knows which way that will go I mean this is cup football it's a one off isn't it it's a roll of the dice you're in or you're out yeah. and you're one if you win this you're the one step away from going back to, but the whole Kingston Rovers will be, they'll be out for revenge after last year, won't they? Absolutely. Right? They will. Absolutely. Well, we've got more live action for you on the Sportsman this weekend. It's a derby. It's Oldham versus Rochdale in League One, live on the Sportsman this weekend. So looking forward to that. More live rugby for you. Oldham versus Rochdale in League One. Well, Oldham have now got Sean Long as their coach. Let's hear from him. Is the appeal that you're kind of taking on a project rather than a pre-established team almost? Yeah, 100%. We are, you know, we've all come, I think the team from last year is kind of dispersed and we've we brought in a new team, lads from different clubs, you know, the, you know Wigan and, and Saints and, and Leeds and, and obviously we've got a couple of uh, senior lads who's played in the NRL and played for the country like Joe Wardle and Joe, John Turner, Elijah Taylor and then so we've got a good blend of experience and youth uh, so I'm really looking forward to the season like I say it's just making sure it's my job then to make sure we're attacking the way we want to attack and the way we want to defend because everyone defends different in Super League or Championship it's, it's my job to do that. A club with so much history and tradition are you, are you enjoying the kind of responsibility of restoring that club to where it belongs? Yeah, really, really enjoying it. Obviously, really enjoy, enjoying being head coach. Um, obviously, I've been an assistant for 10 years now, and um, I think moving back to Boundary Park is massive for us. Uh, we're building a new training facility, and, um, you know, fingers crossed, if we can perform on the field, and um, we're working hard on the training field, if we can, if we can put that on the field, against the opposition, then hopefully we'll get the fans back in the droves and put Oldham back on the map where they belong. So Oldham versus Rochdale live on the Sportsman this weekend. Hit subscribe. Uh, Carl, yep. going quite well at Oldham so far for uh, Sean Long. Yeah, obviously he's brought <clears throat> some quality signings in there. He mentioned uh, Elijah Taylor, he's got Jordan Turner, uh, Wardle in there too. So he's got an awful lot of Super League uh, experience that he's going to need to rely on at times in some tough games, you know. So uh, loads of stuff off the field as well, you know, moving back to Boundary Road and, and the Boundary train, Park, yeah. Boundary Park, sorry, and the training facility that they've got. Lots of exciting stuff happening in and around Oldham. And you, you've got to tip your hat to clubs that are having a crack, haven't you? And they certainly are. Yeah, you've got to fancy him for League One as well, haven't you? Yeah, you would think so, wouldn't you? They're by far the clear favourites, you would imagine. But, you know, as we see in rugby league, it doesn't always work <laughs> like that, does it? You know, you've got to go out there and perform over the course of eight, nine, ten months. Right, let's turn our attention to the uh, Rivals weekend in the Betfred Super League. And it starts on Thursday night. Castleford versus the Leeds Rhinos. We've mentioned Leeds already. 1-3, uh, lost 2. Castleford without a win. Mm, good time to get the first one then, isn't it? I suppose. Well, yeah. Against the Rhinos, yeah. you know, if anyone, if anyone needs to motivate yeah. Castleford, there it is. You know, you're playing the Leeds Rhinos. It, in in this game, it's always like the haves against the have-nots, isn't it? You know, mm. big city slickers from Leeds turn up at Weldon Road, and I remember when when I used to go to the jungle that you know it was always a game that they looked forward to at Castleford. They like to put them in their place. You know, their It'll be a good atmosphere. Neighbors. It'll be fantastic. Well, it always is. And hopefully there will be plenty there on Thursday night for, for this game because it's one of the most attractive games of the season for them. Yeah, I mean, terrific. You know, and, and as I say, Cass now, they've got the monkey off the back. They've won one. Now they've got to try and kickstart the season. Need to win one in the Super League, yeah. And, and what a way... What a way to kickstart your season by turning the Leeds Rhinos over. I don't know whether it can happen, but let's wait and see. And just on that, what an opportunity that they've got. They've got the Rhinos at a wounded, vulnerable state at the minute, giving off the back of what... You know, when your head coach comes out and says that your performances have been disappointing... The, 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 he's almost having a crack at the players there to take it upon themselves. You know, the quality that Rhinos have got is, you know, there's no question marks over that. But they're not putting it together at the moment. And Castleford have a real opportunity. I think for Castleford, they have to win this game. I think it, it, it's almost not, not, we wouldn't say now or never, but this is a game that if they're going to, you know, if they're going to try and have a crack this season, they've got to Kick win Kickstart your season. Exactly, Leads exactly, at home. Mark. Yeah. Thursday yeah. night. Yeah. I'm going to say live on Sky as well. It's obviously, it's a huge game. But, 
We don't know where Leeds are at, like we were saying, do we? <laughs> no, we don't. We don't. So, you know, which which makes it exciting, doesn't it? So this it? is you a know? bit of like a season starter for Leeds as well, isn't it? After I, going I, out of the Challenge I, I, Cup. I wouldn't quite go as harsh as a season starter because they've got wins on the board. Yeah. They, they, they've got enough sort of credit in the bank early on to know that if they were to lose this game, it wouldn't be doom and gloom, but it would start to head closer and closer towards that but I think I think for I think for Castleford this is just a huge opportunity to get that you know monkey off the back in Super League and start looking ahead rather than looking down if London were to pick up a win I'm not saying that I don't think London will win this weekend but if they were to pick up a win then that pressure you know in the jungle it comes an awful lot higher doesn't it then we turn our attention to Good <laughs> Friday 12.30 the Hull Derby Hull KR versus Hull uh, Hull KR won 22 nil on the opening day of the season at Hull. Last season it was 40 nil to Hull KR at Hull, <laughs> and of course, as we've said, Hull FC are under huge pressure. Just one win, and that was against London. Yes, they are under huge pressure, and the players should be under as much pressure uh, as everybody there because you know they've been giving away penalties. They've been having players sent off, they've been having players sin bin, they've had them up in front of the disciplinary committee. I think they're the most penalised team in Super League and I think their number of games that their players now are going to miss this year is up in the teens. So it, they've got to settle themselves down. I know it's all frustrating for everybody, but they have to settle down. As you say, nilled last year, nilled this year. If they're nilled again, I, I don't know what happens to Hull. I mean, this is a sleeping giant. Hull, as a city, if the game is going well in Hull, the game <coughs> is going well, full stop, around the country. It's good. I'm sure that Hull at KR are you know, rubbing their hands. I talked about the emotion last week. They're doing a big tribute to Phil Lowe mm. this week. So Hull FC will go in on the back of all that emotion again. Oh, it's a massive game. This a huge game. Not so much for Hull KR, because they're going well. But they've not had Mikey Lewis... I don't think he's there, is he? Because he didn't get an HIA. I don't, I don't know whether he'd be there or not. And I think Mikey Lewis is, is cr yeah, crucial. He's, like, he's been Hull brilliant. Season. Season. Brilliant. Just, Absolutely marvellous. Just to jump in there, you referred to Hull, and we referred to them an awful lot over the years as a sleeping giant. I actually think we can't no longer call them that anymore. You know what I mean? I understand the whole city yeah. has a, you know, a well, lot of... Two Challenge players. Cups, what was it? But, 2016, yeah, but, 20... But, 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 but on that's, the bounce. that's not enough to dine out on. I've said this a couple of times over the years in, in, in core comms. For me, they're all packaging and no product. You know, they, 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 they often come to the start of a new season. There's a lot of excitement around who they've brought in. But for whatever reason, it's almost like... The, the club or the or the or the playing group, or however which way you want to look at it, at the moment it appears over the last couple of years that it's rotten to the core. It it it's it's bad, you know. And and I think what Hull KR are doing, uh, what the club are doing, the recruitment they've been doing, the, the the fan engagement, game day experience, everything is just surpassing this so-called sleeping giant. I just don't think we can refer to them as that anymore. I think it's about time that we have to accept where they are and start to talk about them as a bottom four club. Well, they've had, as I say, they've had their suspension problems. They've had their injury problems as well. And Tony Smith, to his credit, has said he has come in on a mission to change the culture of the club. And that does not happen overnight. No, no. So he has to, have be to be time, patient. He? he has to be given time, Tony Smith. He's got credit on what he's done, as Eddie mentioned before, his previous, and he's able to, you know, he's laid the foundations for what Hull KR and Willie Peters are, are now sort of embracing but now. what if there's another do... big Hull KR Well, win? I, th I think you've got to be, I, I think the powers that be at Hull FC have to sort of, uh, they have to recognise whether they're with him or, or, or not, you know, <laughs> and, and, and if they are, then they have to give him time and he has to, you know, but again, th there's been given time and then there's, there's, there's getting 50 points Put on you in in you know in, in multiple games and it's, in a local derby it would be uh, oh, horrendous. Yeah, it even, Tony yeah. has said he has got the confidence of his chairman. I hope that's not a public vote of confidence because mm. we know what happens when they get a public vote of confidence. Coaches and managers. Of so what's teams. what's the the minimum for Hull FC? A, a good performance. I think a win. Uh, yes, I agree. I think a win. I think, win I think they have to win this game. To to to. It's a big ask at the moment, isn't it? It is a big ask. It is a big ask. But uh, I, I just think they have to win. You know, they have to win, or they have to take it right to within you know the final part of that. I don't think they can afford to put the performance that they have done in recent derbies. I don't think that's acceptable, and I just think that if that is the case. It'll just, you know, what is already seems a bit of a rotten apple, it'll become 
it'll become very, very ugly. I, I might have frightened the whole Kingston Rovers fans to death a moment ago, saying Mikey Lewis might be out. He was out of the cup tie, wasn't he, with, yeah. the, with the injury? But Jez Litton and Tyrone May, they didn't do a bad job in his place, yeah. did they? They really didn't. Um, if Mikey Lewis comes back, I can only see well, it going one way. He's been outstanding, hasn't yeah. he? He's been brilliant. Very brilliant. So. You know, real. He's, he's the, that he's just sort of a player cheeky... who gets under everyone's yeah, skin in the yeah, opposition, exactly. doesn't he? You know, he's, yeah. uh, he's all class, isn't he? Uh, and he's enjoying his rugby at the moment, which is all evident to see. Right. So that's 12.30. You take a breath. Then at three <laughs> o'clock, it is St. Helens versus Wigan. Let's hear, first of all, from the St. Helens coach, Paul Wellens. Paul, this is a game that doesn't need much selling. From a coaching perspective, is it is exciting for for you guys as it is for the fans? Yeah, absolutely. It's uh, you know I know the the playing group's excited about it. I certainly am as well. It's uh, obviously it's a, a huge fixture in the calendar. Uh, you know, throughout the course of the season, you have big games like semi-finals, playoffs, grand finals, challenge cup finals that, that are hugely important, and you want to be part of. But I think in terms of the regular round fixtures, they don't come much bigger than Saints and Wigan on Good Friday. And it, it has the feel of two teams at the very top of the competition in terms of ability and, and form as well. It, it feels like it, what we're going to get on, on Friday is a hugely exciting game of rugby league. I would, I, would, I would hope so, yeah. I mean, it's what the fixture deserves, isn't it? I mean, you know, two two great clubs, two face rivals, you know, uh, you know, fighting it out in, 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 in the right way. Uh, um, we're, you know, we're, we're excited about the challenge that, that, that Good Friday presents. Uh, you know, we have a lot of respect for Wigan as a club and what they've achieved. Uh, and uh, you know, we, you know, we look forward to the game on the weekend. It's a real opportunity for us to, uh, you know, to to, to, win, to get two points for first and foremost, but obviously to to win a game which means a little bit more than just two points. Uh, Paul Wellens uh, talking early on the way. Of course, he knows what a big game it is, is playing in uh, so many. Um, what are you laughing at? Oh, just, yeah, it's just making me laugh. <laughs> you're getting excited, you, aren't you? Yeah, I am, I am. And, and Wello even half laughed himself there in that interview when he said it's two points, and then he said, and obviously it's a derby. He's trying to downplay that. Look, it's a huge game. It's, yeah, you can't get away from it. You know, I live in Billings in between St. Helens and Wigan, and uh, you just can't get away from it. And everyone's excited. Uh, you know, my daughter told a funny story the other day. She said about uh, that uh, one of the teachers had told, uh, had asked the class about uh, what's special about Easter, and a kid put his hand up and said, St. V Wigan, <laughs> you know what I mean? It's not. It's a Catholic high school as well. So uh, it's just. It, it, it honestly, Mark, it just grips everybody in the area, and, and everyone's super excited. Oh, what's it like to play one? Brilliant. You know, absolutely amazing. Uh, those are the games that, that if you could almost, you know, I don't miss playing at all. But you know, if you want to go back to odd little moments in your game, it's playing in front of big packed houses, uh, big packed crowds, and full houses. And you know, obviously there's finals in there as well. But besides the final, Mark and Eddie, you, you'll know, th these games are the, the next best thing. Asking what it's like to get sent off in one. Well. I don't actually, but I, I, I didn't do anything wrong. <laughs> <laughs> That's everybody's defence. That's everybody's defence. Uh, you can't say that. Yeah, there's, yeah. There's, listen, there's been some fantastic games. <laughs> He's done you there. <laughs> Thanks, <laughs> Mark. <laughs> been some fantastic occasions over, well, the recent history, the, the history all the way back to when it first started. 20 years ago, uh, this Good Friday, Steve and I witnessed the 21 all epic. Yeah that ended up with a mass brawl at the end. 26 yeah. players going hammer and tongues at each other. I think in right saying Farrell and Sculthorpe could have been on at the Madison Square Garden. Yeah. But, you know, it was a fantastic, fantastic occasion. This is going to be a full house. The, the tickets have been sold weeks ago, so it's not a false yeah. dawn, this. Yeah. He's even got the last ticket, uh, Mark Pearson. No, you're, but look, you're going, but it's going to be well, brilliant. As brilliant. well, going into this, it's always been a big game, but going into this... You've got a Wigan side that are playing very, very well. Yeah. And, you know, Saints, we're not so sure, mm. but still are up there. Uh, we, we got two, probably, it's probably the best form these two teams have been in when they've met each other for a while. Would yeah. you agree with that? Yeah, absolutely. I, I think, though, Mark, I think if, if, if the fixture had been reversed at this stage of the season where they're at, and you went into a, uh, a, a Good Friday derby at Wigan, I would say Wigan win this. Yeah. But I think with Saints being at home, 
I think now Wigan, you know, I, I do believe that they'll go on and have a period of success. I think St. Helens have had a wonderful four or five seasons that they put together, but I believe there's a bit of a change in guard. I think it's Wigan's time now. But And the Saints players will be very much aware of that, and they'll want to try and knock off Wigan, I think, and particularly in front of the home crowd. Uh, you know, Wigan will probably, you know, be Bucky's favourites, I reckon. Yeah. Maybe, maybe. Well, the only unbeaten side as well. Wigan, exactly, right? exactly. But I think with it being at Saints, I think it makes it very, very, very hard to call mm. uh, and those games you know the, the, the derby games the big games they come down to you know the, the skill and the, the, it'll all be there it, you know all the top players Field, French, Wellsby, Makinson all your big players will be there it'll just come down to what's between the ears and who wants it and, and is it you know an element of luck in there as well I'll get your predictions in a moment first of all let's get, hear from the Warriors side of things and he's been a great start to the season Harry Smith uh, well Harry good for Harry Derby's rugby league doesn't get much bigger than this it, Exciting week for you guys? Yeah, definitely an exciting week. Um, one of the highlights of the, the Super League fixtures. Um, everyone, not just Wigan and Saints, will definitely be watching this game. And yeah, it's just a privilege to be part of and uh, one I'm looking forward to. Uh, I know it's always on Good Friday, but it does feel very early this season. Only kind of a handful of games in. Is that almost to make it even more interesting? Because you, you've had plenty of games to get your, your kind of wheels up to speed, but you're playing each other at a very fresh stage of the season, I guess. Yeah, definitely. Well, they'll be round round six officially. So yeah, yeah. Like you say, both teams probably still trying to find the find the feet technically and tactically and uh, pick out some pointers where they want to want to improve. So yeah, but like we've we've said, uh, wherever each team is when you usually play this fixture, it goes out the window sort of thing. Uh, it's just a sort of a, a one off game, and whoever plays the right way and, and wants it more will, will usually get the win. Uh, it's two form sides as well that adds to what is already going to be a fantastic atmosphere because it does feel like it'll be a significant game in the league table as well yeah definitely it could almost be a six pointer um, they were both undefeated so oh no they've lost one game out there unfortunately yeah um, yeah it's just every every game between Wigan and Saints is, is massive and um, one that every Super League fan looks forward to and yeah it's just going to be a great spectacle and hopefully it doesn't rain as much as it is today and we can put a show on. Forecast is not great between uh, now and Friday. How good is Harry Smith? I think he's really good. I mean, yeah. he obviously had a lot of talent when Wigan got him. And then he got tutored by the one and only Lee Breers, who was, in my opinion, one of the best kickers out of hand and off the tee uh, yeah. in Super League for a long, long time. So I think Lee had a little bit of influence on him. As I say, he had a bit of talent before Lee got there, but Lee maybe just polished it just a, a little bit. Yeah, great player, and he, he's done so well, hasn't he, uh, for the Wigan Warriors. I also think there are two fantastic coaches in charge of these two clubs. Yeah. Matt uh, Pete is the... Uh, he is extended the, his contract. Yes, yeah, yeah, only, only yeah, seven yeah. years, yeah. 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 <laughs> <laughs> along with, with the other two, Tommy and Sean. But, and I see also that uh, Jake Wardle signed a five-year deal in the past 24 hours. So Wigan have got a bit of stability moving mm. forward. But Matty Pete... What he's done is remarkable. Paul yeah. Wellens, he was handed the poison chalice in many ways, wasn't he? You know, after so much success, only one way, but they're not slipping too far. This is a huge game for Saints and Paul. This will be a statement of intent. We, they beat Wigan, so you don't and people have to will sit, talk about them. You don't have to sit on the fence anymore now. Golden point. <laughs> <laughs> no, I think... Go on, who wins it? I think, I think, I, I'm with, with Kyle. I think home advantage will play its, its part in this and I think Saints will just sneak it but it will be an epic it'll be brilliantly called by this fellow on my left <laughs> yeah, you can't fail yeah no no I can't <laughs> well it depends which hat you wear isn't it whatever I say will obviously go against what Wigan yeah. fans and yeah. look that's all part yeah. and parcel of it welcome uh, to the club ex you know <laughs> but look besides that you know I'm out of the game now I want the you know I just want to call what the players are doing and, and say exactly what I see. And, and, and for me, though, if I'm going into this one, I, I think the home advantage is going to help Saints. I think, uh, I think Wigan are on the cusp of doing a record 16 in a row. Uh, and I think Saints might just have enough to spoil the party. But I do think that it will be an incredibly, incredibly close game. Right, we need to talk about three other matches and apologies, we are running out of time. So apologies to the fans of these clubs. These games are just as big and just as important to you. Right, Warrington, Catalan, three o'clock Saturday. Warrington are top of the league. 
Only one defeat, and that was away at Catalan. Indeed, first game of the season. Michael McAlorum sent off, first minute of the second half. Everyone in Warrington, I'm sure, rubbing their hands. This is going to be it. We're going to be off to a, a flying start. It didn't happen. Maybe, when you look back to what happened last year, eight from eight at the start, maybe that was the it's best thing. It's just taking a bit of pressure happen. off Sam Burgess, Taking possibly, the pressure yeah. off him right away, and they've now gone unbeaten uh, ever since then. Uh, yeah, big game. Um, I don't, I'm, I'm sure that Warrington will be hoping they'll get the revenge, but Catalan... They're a dogged side, aren't they? They won't go away, will they, the no. Catalan Dragons? No, they no. They really won't. A lot more consistent now. Yes, they are. And, and, and this tag that like they don't travel well, they have a bit of travel sickness, really? that's gone. No, it's that's gone, gone for so now. They've sorted out, Oh, they? sorted completely. And Steve McNamara, you know, what a job he's done down there. Fantastic. Yeah, look, I think this is a very difficult game to call, isn't it? I think both sort of teams have uh, have had similar sort of paths so far this season. Uh, Warrington, uh, I don't think, uh, I don't recall them yet to play one of the, apart from the Catalans away, I don't think they've played another sort of what you would go top four clubs heading into this season. So, look, it'll be, it'll be one that you have to win. I think if you're going to finish in the playoffs, you have to sort of, in the games where you have... Uh, clubs that you perceive are on equal party you'll win a game at home and you might lose away or vice versa I think if, if Warrington are going to finish in the playoffs then they have to they have to return serve and win Salford Lee Ooh, oh, oh, yeah, even that was a difficult <laughs> game to call as well you know um, Again, home, home, home advantage could be the key yeah yeah I think Salford uh, look they've just been walloped haven't they in the cup the week before um, you know they've been, been great so far I thought they were incredibly unlucky against Wigan almost threw that away uh, yeah I think Salford I think Salford will, 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 uh, will bounce back from that heavy defeat I think Paul Rowley will be into his players this week about getting back on the horse with a clear focus yeah it was one match in the Challenge Cup that made me really scratch my head because mm. Salford have had, had had such a good start to the season I know Hull Kingston Rovers as we've already said and alluded to playing so well but to go there and be nilled and, yeah. and concede 40 it's points one, emotion or not I couldn't I, 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 I had to look at the, the result a couple of times before it actually sunk in uh, they should bounce back. They really should. Um, there's not much between the two sides, Salford and Lee. You know, I, I, again, what the beauty of this season is, how many times have you all sat around this table and said, <laughs> yeah. too close to call, well, I don't, don't know what's going to happen. Know. No idea. Yeah. Yeah. And that's what it's all about, jeopardy. Um, we don't, when you turn in, tune in, watch the matches, go to the games, you don't know who's going to win. And it's brilliant, absolutely brilliant. And finally on Sunday, I know you, no, you two won't be watching Brighton, Liverpool. You'll be watching <laughs> London Broncos versus Huddersfield. Well, it's unfortunate that this game is sandwiched between Liverpool, Brighton and Man City, Arsenal. I mean, I'll record it and I'll watch it when it's all over. <laughs> and hopefully by the time that, that happens, Liverpool will be top no, of the look, league. Look, look it's, it's, it's big for the London fans and Huddersfield fans. Of course it is. Of course it is. I mean, you'd expect Huddersfield to do it, wouldn't you? You would because of the record this season that London have got, and we're all looking for positives all the time for London because we say time and time again the game needs a team in London to prosper and survive. Okay, they're losing on the field. They got very close against Hull, but their attendances, I think, did we say it last week or did it come out this week? It wasn't the bad. three the yeah. three games that they've had now. More people have been through the turnstiles Brilliant. to watch the Super League three than Good. went through the entire season watching the Championship. So there's a positive. The yeah. problem is they were dealt a blow before yeah. the, the, the season even started. They know they're not going to be there next year. Where's the incentive? The players must feel absolutely flattened. And so must the coach and so must the owner. Yeah, yeah. But just going back to the game, London will take somebody. Somebody will lose down at London. Do you know what I mean? And the challenge is for all the Super League clubs. Is don't let let everybody else worry about it. Let the other eleven clubs worry about it. Not <laughs> us. Not on. So I think Huddersfield. Huddersfield will, for me, they'll win. But I do think you know you saw it in the last time they were in Super League. They turned St Islands over twice. You know I was part of the the, the, the team mm. that day. They will get people because people will go down there with an arrogance, with a swagger that will come here, will collect two points, and will be out. It doesn't always work like that. And London will get somebody, but I don't see it being this week. Right, we've uh, run out of time. Gents, thanks for coming in. Enjoyed your company. You're getting very excited, aren't I you? I am, I am. I need to chill out, don't I? <laughs> <laughs> so you can uh, listen don't to lose Carl your <laughs> on Friday, live on Sky. Of course, all the games are live on Sky. And as well, we've got Oldham versus Rochdale on Sunday, live on The Sportsman. Enjoy the Easter weekend. As Carl's told you, the best thing about Easter is St Helens versus Wigan. See you next week. <laughs>